I would like to correct a lot of people that seem to think that um, I inject myself with copious amounts of steroids and eat <laughs> and weigh my food out to the gram day in, day out. Listen, when I was competing, yes, I did take my gear um, regimented and I was very strict to my diet to the ground. But when was the last time I competed? 2014, 2015? Okay, now I was in Madrid. Yeah, something like that. I don't, I don't compete anymore. I don't even class myself as a bodybuilder anymore. I just enjoy um, my training and I eat what I want. Me and Dee were just um, having this conversation. And I was saying to Dee, I said, isn't it funny? I said, um, the amount of shit we eat, and I've eaten McDonald's fucking- We meaning him. I've eaten McDonald's like three times this week already, like today, let's be honest, me and you have been eating, what did we have? We had um, some baguettes at dinner time, um, and then I bought a cake, and and yet when we train, I still managed to keep um, a decent physique, or a physique that I'm happy with, um, all year round. And he was just going all scientific, and it's quite interesting because I'm, my page is truthful, okay? I, I always, um, and I'll always keep it like that. If I don't know something, I won't try and fill people's heads full of bullshit and pretend, um, which is why I've got people on the mental hamster team, and I don't like giving him a big egg, because he's the biggest fuck, one of the biggest pricks I've fucking ever met in my life. I can't but, disagree. <laughs> he's also one of the most um, educated people I know in this industry, and they're the people that I want on the mental hamster team. So for what he's going to explain to you now, literally he's explained to me, and I, I understood the basics of it, but going into the scientifics, how he explains it, it actually makes sense. I mean, when I was just talking to you just then about how we do, and you do eat um, shit sometimes, how we manage to keep um, our physique, and you would explain to him about the glide, because I think this is, um, this is important, especially for some of the beginners out there. Yeah, well, basically you need to understand how your body works and everyone's genetics are different and some people will store more fat than others so you get endomorphs, ectomorphs, mesomorphs and all the rest of it but your genetics determine the way you are but they will change in time your, your body adapts to whatever you do the most it gets really efficient at doing it so the longer you train, like I've been training 17 years mm -hmm. you're basically um, designing your body to use carbohydrates um, different to what your body would use carbohydrates for, or store carbohydrates to somebody that doesn't train. Yeah, exactly. So for somebody that doesn't train, um, the carbohydrates um, come into the body and the glycogen um, goes into the fat stores. So basically, you eat a carbohydrate, it goes into your system, your body will break it down into glycogen, into your, your bloods. Yeah. Your body, when you eat carbs, your body releases insulin, which will, which will gather up the glycogen in your blood and take it to its destination. Now, so for somebody that trains, if you train, or trained a long time, you know, yeah. and you have a lot of muscle, yeah. then you're gonna have a lot of glycogen storage space in your muscle. Yeah. So your first and foremost uh, energy source when you're training is glycogen in the muscle. So that insulin would take all the glycogen into the muscle to store it, ready to train. And it's only the when it fills up that store, it puts whatever it's it has left into, full, into fat. But it's full, if it spills over, it will get stored yeah. as fat. But somebody who doesn't train, somebody who's obese, like for instance Calvin, when he first, before he started training, mm -hmm. what would have happened to him? If he don't train, his body has no reason to hold glycogen in the muscle. His gly he hasn't got much muscle, his glycogen stores in the muscle would be very small. However, he, he, you've got receptors in the muscle, you've got receptors in the fat. The more fat you have, the more fat receptors you have. So, say there's two people, you both eat 400 grams of carbs, You've been training for many years, your body's become really efficient at storing glycogen. Not only, the more muscle you have, the more glycogen stores. The longer you train, the more efficient it has at storing glycogen. So if you have 400 grams of carbohydrates, probably all that 400 grams will get stored into the muscle, none go towards fat. If you're a fat cunt, <laughs> basically, and you don't train, that same 400 grams wouldn't go to the muscle, it would get stored as fat because that's where all the, the, the is more sensitive to be stored as fat because you, you've got more receptors in the fat. Yeah. So you can change that. If you start training, 
your body starts to recognize that I need glycogen for the muscle, even though the muscle's small, it will start becoming more efficient at storing the glycogen in the muscle. So then say 50 grams of that 400 gram muscle, 350 yeah. fat, and it, it will have a, a knock on effect. So the more fat you lose, the less receptors you get in fat. And the protein, it works the same with protein, doesn't it? If you have too much protein, uh, what happens then? <coughs> it's this misconception. People think if you eat protein too much, you just shit it out. Your body's very efficient. It's not just gonna waste calories. See, if you eat too much protein, it's gonna convert what's not used into glycogen to be stored in a muscle or as fat. See, to be fair, I actually thought that too. Well, I, I, I did and I didn't. I knew if you have too much protein, it's bad for your kidneys, bad for your organs. Um, but I did think that too much protein, like everybody, you end up shitting it out. Um, and I was part of that misconception too. Um, yeah. So I was half right, it is bad for your kidneys, and it does go through that process, but yeah. um, it doesn't you want, you necessarily want get shit out. I mean, it's, what, what's, what, what's healthy, what's right for muscle building? Protein, you always go by your lean body mass because it's the muscle that needs the calories of the protein. It's not your fat or your body weight. Yeah. So if you're 300 pound, but you're only 200 pound of muscle, you don't need to go by 300 pound because mm. the fat's dormant, it does nothing. Yeah. So you always go by your lean body mass. It's something like 0.4 to 0.5 grams of protein per lean body mass to be healthy. That's all you need. If you want to build muscle, you need a lot more protein. So yeah. you're looking more, one, I always go to 1.5 grams of protein per pound of lean body mass. So say, for argument's sake, I'm 200 pound lean body mass, I'm gonna need nearly 300 grams of protein per day. But, but even though you minutes. need more protein in order to build more muscle, you want that, that's not necessarily all the time, you need to balance it out, like you said. Otherwise, it can be used, too much protein. Can be used. Your body's only going to absorb a yeah. certain amount in one go. <clears throat> I mean, if too much protein, then the excess gets stored into glycogen, yeah. and then so, it can go to different places. Every person's different. Uh, it depends on your genetics to how much you can absorb yeah. in one go. It depends how much muscle you get. Your body becomes more efficient. So, say uh, they go by a guideline: thirty grams of protein in one serving. Obviously, Ronnie Coleman gets to his size, the amount of time he's been training, his genetics, he's gonna absorb a lot more protein yeah. than 30 grams in yeah. one sitting. But average Joe on the street, when he first starts, you wanna look for about 30 grams. If you're consuming way much more than that, one, it's gonna put a lot more stress on your kidneys and your digestive system, which is not needed. And secondly, what's not used as protein will then go to be stored as glycogen or fat. This is, a, I'd like to point out, this is why I have such a problem thing. A lot of respectable athletes in the industry have a lot of, uh, have a big problem with these so called um, gurus that take money off of people for tailor made diet plans. And they're not, not actually tailor made, they're just copy and pasted. It's okay having a generic diet plan. I did one for, um, well, a tailor made one for Calvin, and I made it available for everybody at the Mental Health Society. It's okay to have one as a guideline, but what is wrong? And where you start conning people is when you're taking money off people for a tailor-made diet plan um, and, you, and you're competing. And you get people in the industry, I'll fucking say it again, um, I know he hasn't got an issue with them, um, but people like fucking Neil Hill, only 50 tailor um, people, spaces available left um, for my program. So he, he, he has tailor-made 50 people's um, diet plans. Well, you cannot, it's not possible to tailor-make um, 50, it's not possible to do an online um, consultation and um, what's the word that I'm using for? I, I would find it Contest hard prep. For more you than can't. 10, 20 exactly. 10, 20 people. Because you've got to keep on them. You need to find out what's working for them, what's not. And above all, you have a responsibility towards their health as well. Um, and you really, really need to be careful of that. You can get all the advice you need. You can really get your genetics uh, and, and put, well, push your physique to the best it can be, actually for free, by just speaking to maybe your gym owner. There is a lot, if you train in one of them old school gyms, you know, where you've got one of them people that have been They've been there, worn the t-shirt. He could give you more advice than what you're going to get off of these fucking gurus. The next point as well is what um, Dean made, which is, this is fucking so important and a big misconception, <clears throat> is uh, the health part of it. Too much, pro the cause of um, kidney problems for people can get often um, blamed for steroid usage. I had it myself, had an abscess 
uh, from an injection. I had uh, septicemia, yeah, blood poisoning. I ended up fucking in the hospital, and they did uh, tests on my kidneys, and they were fucking operating um, not very good. Uh, and I remember my best friend um, James Collier. Kids don't got, do don't do drugs. He's got fucking university degrees coming out of his ears, isn't he? When the ju- when the um, the doctor was saying, that, you know, you need to stop taking steroids now because it's affecting your kidneys. We worked out it was nothing to do with the steroid usage. What I was doing was I was overdosing on protein, which you can not call it overdosing really. You're overdoing the protein because well, you and you're taking more protein than what you need to and it's doing more damage to your kidneys than what it is benefiting your body. So from that day on, I said to um, Dean just in there, um, I cut my protein right down. So I used to be mad on it, like, like plenty of you out there, where I'll be, you know, you can't start your day without a protein drink. Then come dinner time, you're having a protein drink. Then you're having your meals throughout the day. <coughs> then after your training session, you have a protein drink. Before bed, you make sure you have a protein. It's too much fucking yeah. protein. So what I ended up doing was, in the morning, and I still do it now, I just have my oats with no protein. And then I'll go maybe two hours and then I'll have like a meal or I might have a protein drink later on. Same as before bed. You know, I'll have my cottage cheese, but later on, before I go to bed, I might just have a, a bowl of cereal or, a, or, prote- or uh, not protein, um, a bowl of oats. You know, you don't necessarily need protein all the time. And when I started upping my carbs, I managed to keep a full physique um, pretty much all year round. I don't get fat. And if you've been training for a long time and you train with intensity, you're not going to get fat, are you? It's all down to how much yeah. you've got stored in your muscle and how much fat you've got. Right. If you get that fat, if you get really, really fat, you're going to have so many fat stores that it's going to be almost impossible to build muscle. Yeah. So the leaner you are, the easier it is to build muscle. Mm. The fatter you are, the easier it is to get fatter. So if you carry a decent amount of muscle and you're lean, it's quite hard to get fat. Yeah. If, if you eat clean the majority of the time and you eat a bit of shit, you're not going to get fat. Well, even if you haven't got that lean physique, <clears throat> what you're going to end up doing is you, you're just going to stay fuller. You're going to get mm. um, fuller. And it's also going to save you a hell of a lot of money on supplements because you're not going to be taking half the amount of protein yeah. um, throughout the day. And all of a sudden now, a protein tub that lasts you probably two and a half, three weeks is now lasting you a month and a half, two months. And you, know, you can then afford to spend um, your money on good quality you protein. saying about the protein, I say you need one to 1.5 <coughs> grams per lean body mass. I mean, that's more, I didn't even know that. more than enough to grow muscle. Yeah. So if my lean body mass, I only need a up to 300 grams of protein a day. I'll split that equally between six meals. That's more than enough protein my body needs. So if I eat 500 grams of protein, I'm not gonna grow faster, I'm not gonna grow more muscle, I'm just gonna put more strain on my whole system. It's a slow process to grow muscle, it takes time, you can't force it. If you force it, think of your body like a, like a machine, you're, you're loading it, you can only take so much load. If you're overloading the machine, constantly it's going to break down yeah. you're putting too much stress on the system and you can guarantee when you do go to the doctors because something isn't right you will get misdiagnosed they will blame it on the easiest thing which is steroids and what you're doing is you're, you're not fixing the problem and all that's going to do is then end up with you having other health um, problems because you're not you know everything's all going to be going wrong isn't it? really quickly um i see that's probably the most Informative video I've ever done. I don't know. I just took it out. You know, it's, you need a rest now. I do. Yeah. You, you I feel like remember when you were at school and you were like, "Fucking hell!" When it was maths day, you're like, "Oh fuck me!" Five times table. You need a protein shake now and rest up. <clears throat> well, I've got all your attention. There's only ten of these left. Oh my god! <laughs> that that protein out. shake. We're not. Hiding. We're gonna throw it back up now. We're not getting any more. So if you'd like a uh, 2019 calendar. <laughs> hey, listen, if, pe- uh, yeah, if yes, people yes. are willing to buy it, which people, I weren't even gonna make one of these. This was because so many people were inboxing us, weren't they, Eddie, saying, listen, That's do a right. calendar, do a calendar. Am I wrong in doing one? If people wanna buy it, yeah, am yeah. I wrong in doing I'm, one? I'm not knocking it. I used to get loads of gay muscle worship men asking me. I don't care if they're gay. People. Gay people have money too. If you happen to be gay <laughs> and you want me on your wall, um, go to mentalhamster.com. The pink pound is strong. The pink pound is strong. Um, we take pink pounds. Um, go to mentalhamster.com. Um, there's only 10 left. Yeah, if you don't mind being a prostitute and selling pictures of I'll sell myself, mate. I don't give a shit. 
I'll do it. If they were going to pay enough money for it, I'll fucking strip naked and you're bend just, myself over that. You're pipe. just happy somebody wants you naked. Yeah. <laughs> At least someone does that. Yeah. Uh, give you a little preview of the uh, still selling like that. Don't show too much. Preview of the pictures there, never before seen pictures. <clears throat> That's it. And hopefully never to be seen again. <laughs> That's it, I've tried it, buddy.